And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, four of us, exactly four, because this is a four-player game only, are going to cooperatively try to solve mysteries. Who done it? So, we're talking about Witness here. It's from Yastari Games, brought to us by Asma Day in the US. Again, four players only. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to play the game, but there's 64 cases in here. So, let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on their side. Now I'm gonna be real careful how I show this review. I don't wanna induct any spoilers, but you get one of the books you get is a book of cases. And on the back here, you can see that there are 64 different cases. The first 12 are beginner, 13 through 34 are normal, 35 through 56 are difficult, and 57 through 64 are what's called diabolical. And so in the cases, what's gonna happen is, there's no spoilers in this, but let's just say we go to uh, case number three here. And it will give you some background. So this one's called A Hair Short, and this is a beginner. The Davenport brothers have set up a highly lucrative network of false mediums and fraudulent seers based in London. Matt, Brian, Harry, and Vincent, the bolds are very important, Davenport, look uh, they all look like twins well actually quadruplets but with one slight difference they all wear different style of mustaches i'd like to keep an eye on the four medium brothers there's a lot of money involved and even if i can't read a crystal ball i think that one of the davenport brothers will attempt to send one of his brothers to the great beyond to solve this case connect first names with the mustache styles so that's what you're trying to do in this specific case. And other cases have things about more, more murderous type things, but in this case, you're just trying to fix that. And there's one of these little case in, in, uh, intros for all of those. Now, each of the four players, now again, this is only a four player game, will take a standee and the book of that character. This, these people are each gonna have one piece of the clue for each of the cases. So they'll take that, they'll take the book, and we'll get started. So the way around works is they have this little round marker that goes here. There's gonna be four rounds. Okay, and so these people are seated who have this, the characters in front of them that they took in this order around the table. And what's gonna happen is in round one, the yellow player, now each of these players has a book again of the, it has a, each one has a clue. So Blake is gonna look at the case that they're in and look at the clue he has, same for red. They are then going to whisper that clue into the ear. So where yellow is gonna whisper into the blue player's ear, red into the green player's ear. Now they cannot uh, say anything else. These guys who are listening cannot say anything except please repeat. And that's it. Then we go here, and now it changes a little bit. Now blue is gonna give clue to red, and green is gonna give clue to yellow. And the way this works is now blue is not only gonna give the clue that he just heard from yellow, he's also gonna give the clue that's in his book. And same for green. Then we go to round three, and now yellow again is gonna whisper to blue like he did in the first round, but in this case he's got more information because things are going around the table. So he has the clue in his book and the other clues that he's heard. Same for this, and same for the fourth round. So you're getting pretty much all the clues back to you through the game of telephone by the end. Now when we get to the end, again, through any of these, they go right in a row and there's no writing anything down. You, all this, these four rounds is all done by memory. Then when we get to here, people get to write down notes that they want on their notebook. There is a notepad here where you write the name of the case here, you write all your notes here, and after you've written your notes, there's gonna be some questions. So each, there's a big questions book that comes with this, and we go to the case of the one that you're in and it will have three questions that you're to answer about the case. And in that here, you will write down the answers to your three questions. Now, when you're doing these questions, you cannot talk with the other people. It's completely silent. You're on your own. You just have to basically use the clues that you were given. There's no talking. And every, once everyone does the three questions, someone gets the, the booklet of solutions. There's a booklet of solutions. And they go to the case, and it will give them the solution for that. And it will tell you everything about it. And then we will see how many we got right. So each person is going to get one point for each of these that they got correct. And so for four players, a... Uh, a, a perfect uh, score is 12. And then you score you know, different ranges of, of, of points, six or less, seven to nine, 10 to 11, or 12. You're just kind of scoring uh, here just to, just to see how well you did. And then you would start a new case. That's pretty much how the game is played. Now, this is here. Now, notice that yellow goes to blue and red goes to green. Now, if you flip this over, it actually has yellow going to green and red going to blue. 
So it kind of changes up who does who on this one. There's also a second board that you can play with that you can help randomize things. If you look at the difference between these, we see in the first run, yellow talks to blue, and in this one, blue talks to this. So blue, everything goes left first uh, here, and, and, and so it just kind of changes the ordering of who says who to what during what rounds. And of course, flipping it over to the white sides also changes that. So there's a little differences as to, so it doesn't all, it's not always the same thing. So you can flip those around between the four different types. There's pretty much all the combinations there. And then you just play it. It's just a 10 minute, 10 minute, uh, um, um, 10 minute case. And again, you've got 64 of them to choose from. And that's the most I can show you without any spoilers. All right, well, there's Witness. Well, you, if you've watched my videos, you know I love deduction games, and this won my most innovative game of the year for 2014. Well, why is that? Well, this game is really half deduction and half memory. Uh, before you turn it off, I don't typically like memory elements in games. I don't, I, def, I definitely don't like them normally. But this game really is half memory because people are whispering things into your ear and you have to remember them. But the cool thing is, and and when we played this at Gen Con for the first time, we got a sneak peek with some of the Asmodee reps. And when they play this game with us, now the rules don't say you can't do this. And since they showed us this, this is the way I play the game, is when you get a clue, it's, it's, it, part of the game is not just reciting the clue to somebody, but some, some of it, a lot of the game is interpreting that clue and trying to do some type of word association to help the other person remember it better. For example, if, the, if it was uh, the victim was thin, you know, you could, you could whisper in the person's ear, Victim, thin. Just remember, they rhyme together. Victim, thin. Or, you know, something weird like that. If it's somebody's name, you could, like, use some other words to add to it to help them remember it. Um, and so that's kind of like the key of the game, too, is trying to make it easier for the other person to remember it by saying something funny or saying something that kind of rhymes with it or something. Uh, and that's really kind of how you get better at this game by doing those interesting clues. So it is half memory because when you're done hearing stuff, you got to remember it. Now, the cool thing is, is you can look at your own clue anytime. So you don't have to force yourself to remember your clue, but you got to remember the ones that are going around. And at the end, when nobody can say anything and you're trying to answer those questions, it's kind of fun. And then you, you try to see how you did. Now, again, this is more, I guess you'd say it's more of an activity than a game, really, because kind of like Hanabi, when you work together and you just try to get points. No one wins, no one loses. It's just like a range of points. Sure, it's fun, and you're trying to get better points, but you don't really care too much how well you did. I mean, you want to do well, but you're not really keeping score. Um, it's more of an activity, but it's still, for me, this is a ton of fun. Now, the biggest thing I think pe the problem people, people are going to have with this game is they're going to say, look, it, it, it looks like it's a consumable game. You play it 64 missions and you're done, right? You can never play it again. Maybe. But even 64 games comes out to about 10 hours of play. Uh, and for what you're paying for this game, it's not too expensive. 10 hours is probably well worth the value, and if it sells well, they'll probably make more, right? But I will also say that I played a specific uh, case at Gen Con, and then played that same case again at BGG Con, and I did not remember the specifics of the case that, that ruined it for me. Now, some of the cases have things like maps or uh, different diagrams, and there's certain keys to those diagrams where once you've seen them, you probably will ease, more easily remember those and it will help you the next time you play it. But on the ones that don't have those diagrams where it's really just trying to remember certain things about it, those ones you probably, more often than not, if you haven't played it in a while, you probably won't really remember any, at all, all the things in those cases. Because you'll try to play some of these beginner cases with, with a group, and then maybe a month or two later, you'll have a different group and you'll want to play this game. And you're like, well, I don't want to do those beginner ones again because I've already done them. You probably can still do them, would be my guess. And that's going to be the biggest gripe or biggest concern of people. And just in my personal experience, I don't think you'll remember everything from all the cases. Unless you just did it the night before, then you're doing it with another group, the night of, then yeah, maybe that's a problem. But my guess is if there's some space and some time between and you're doing the ones that aren't diagram driven, which is only, you know, it's only a handful, a small percentage of them that have the diagrams. I, I think that's, that, that argument is somewhat valid, but not completely. So anyway, I think it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. Unique. Okay, the other downside is it's four players exactly, and sometimes it's hard to get exactly four players. At BGGCon, we had a fifth player, and we actually had that person doing the reading of the story and the reading of the questions, and they kind of, they felt involved, and they thought that was kind of fun too. So anyway, that's Witness. If you like deduction, uh, with a little bit of memory, even if you don't like memory, you might still want to try this one if you like deduction and you want to have something completely unique that fits in a collection. That's Witness. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.